So today I just want to talk through a very common industry problem or control issue which is to desuperheat steam. The objective behind desuperheating steam is you're letting steam down from a high pressure to a lower pressure and because of that um, you are going to have to add water just to bring it close to saturation temperature. So here's an example. You have um, your HP steam coming in, which is going through basically a standard flow meter. This one in this particular example has a conditioning orifice, and then you have your medium pressure steam, medium pressure boiler free water, sorry. And what you'll find is that there is a flow meter on the boiler free water line and a flow meter on the steam line. Now given the problems with turn down on these types of uh, types of installations it's quite common not to use flow control but sometimes you can and um, it does linearize it if you are in a reliable region always. Now the standard thing that's done with uh, most of these designs well yeah the first thing is you need a specialized um, device which is shown here and this is normally a special item from the vendor which um, is this repeat where you're injecting the water into the steam and you bring it down to a certain temperature you'll see there's a this distance here it's actually been highlighted up here and normally that's quite a specific distance it's a function of how well the the water is atomized inside the steam DCP user. And this is a typical design that comes out of uh, any hazard. It's a temperature controller, which is regulating, uh, which is measuring on the outlet, and it basically adjusts the, the boiler feed water, water, <laughs> so to speak. Anyway, so it looks fine, and typically this is what you see, and everything is fine. Now what happens in practice is this design doesn't work. So I have to explain, first I have to explain mathematically why it doesn't work from a simple heat and material balance and how one can improve the design in such a way that uh, it can operate through an entire operating region. Now this one, a lot of the cases that aren't considered during startup, you don't really have this valve over here, um, this valve over here which is a steam valve. It's only partially open. Often there are uh, minimum bypass lines around here. So there will be a minimum bypass around this line here. So sometimes there is minimum steam going through just to keep this unit warm. Um, it's not shown in this particular example. You have the steam quality and temperature and pressure, which is used to compensate the flow measurement, which is also another topic on its own um, and there's just this there's no real flow control here so let's go into why this doesn't work so unfortunately now i've got to go through a little bit of mathematics just to explain the little bit of a problem and um, here we go so we have a mass balance so m1 in this case is the boiler feed water, so M1, mass of water plus the mass of steam gives me combined mass going out. Now, when we do an energy balance, we have the mass of water times the enthalpy of the water plus the mass of the steam times the enthalpy of the steam is the combined uh, mass and Entropy of the final steam quality. Now, this particular enthalpy we're trying to control actually because we're trying to control a certain quality. In other words, it's at a certain pressure and a certain temperature. One can go into a lot of things, but if you plot the enthalpy of steam around a typical operating region, you will find that the enthalpy is a function of temperature and pressure. Is proportional mostly linearly it's actually quadratic but it's fine I mean it's it's fairly linear to temperature now if we take this 
and we make this assumption and we replace every enthalpy with a k and a t and we change the subject of the equation because now h will be replaced with a k and a t um, h2 will replace the k and a t we get a different because we're not trying to control temperature as i said this is we're trying to control quality which is a function of temperature so that's linked to there so now we replace the subject of the equation and some simplifications we do the first order derivative with respect to the exit temperature so what it shows you the exit temperature temperature t3 is a function of the boiler feed water minus the exit temperature over the sum of the masses times the change in the feed mass so this is the first order perturbation it's quite important to do this because it gives you a relationship or the gains so if you look at this particular relationship what it's showing you is that typically T1 is going to be less than T3. So this is going to have a negative gain. Right? So in other words, if I increase the boiler feed water, I have a negative gain. Yeah, so this is negative. Bear with me on the writing. I'm working on a pad and my handwriting generally is really, really bad. I should have been a doctor. Um, and then if you look at the second one, again, Temperature T2, that is the superheated HP steam. So this uh, particular one has a positive gain. Now look very, very carefully. The denominator, the denominator is very important. The denominator is M1 plus M2. Now let's talk about startup case. Startup case M2 is going to be very low. M1 will be probably zero, in other words, it's closed. So 1 over a very small number tends towards some very, very large number. So what is it saying? It's saying that at startup, for any small change of the steam flow, I've got an infinitely large effect on the temperature, or very large effect on temperature. And for a very small change in the boiler feed water, I have a fairly large change in the temperature again. So the problem is this denominator, it's not linear. In fact, it's a hyperbolic function. Scrolling down on this, and let's have a look at the plot now of this equation. So this is on a log scale. So again, um, I'm removing the k values now. So you can see because I've not put the gain in, so they've shown you the gain. What we can do is, um, because we know that, that in essence the quality of the steam hasn't changed, because the quality of the steam hasn't changed, the, the numerator on the previous equation was a constant, and similarly for that for the uh, MP steam. So this numerator is constant, so the temperature wouldn't have to worry, temperature differential. So we've just got something that's proportional to the mass flows. But have a look at this. So we have this extremely high gain at the startup. And this is on a log scale. So remember, it's, it's quite significant. So we've got this horrible nonlinear gain using the control method that we have. Remember now, this is the control variable. So that's our control variable. That's a disturbance variable. It's not writing now. There we go. Hmm. DV or feed forward. We call it feed forward. We're not really measuring it, or we're not really using it. And this is our manipulated variable because we're manipulating boiler feed water. So you can see that this is a horrible thing. And what are you going to tune it for? Do you tune it for startup conditions? You have very low gain in your PID algorithm. What do you tune it for normal operation? And then how do you handle the transition? It gets a bit messy. So one has to start questioning the design again and see if there's a better way to do this. But this is a blending problem. So let's just talk through now how we convert the nonlinear problem to a linear problem. So remembering. Here we have the equation that we 
and before which we agreed or well, I explained was non-linear let's change the problem a little bit and say well we know that we want to control the mass of the boiler feed water in ratio where R is the ratio so R is the ratio so the thing we're manipulating now is ratio and it's in ratio with the boiler feed water steam now this can be an actual flow measurement it could be a valve opening because of valve opening in the first flow measurement but okay there's non-linearity there which is another topic on its own but let's assume for the purposes of this example that we are just ratioing it in with the mass flow now if we change if we take this original equation at the top here which is uh, equation 1 and that's equation 2 and we substitute equation 1 into equation 2 we end up getting this so here we have the um, this is now your steam and that's your desuperated steam again change the subject of the equation well let's now take the energy balance which is that one up there so now we have an equation 3 and we substitute equation 3 into equation 4 we end up with equation 5 well, first we introduce the ratio added that, uh, applied that with the heat material balance to get the relationship between M2 ratio and M3 substitute that into the energy balance and then change the subject to the formula to H3 remember I said we're trying to control quality of the um, the steam that's been desuperated so H3 we know is proportional all of these values here are proportional um, as per our original equation up here, uh, this one this one holds. Keeping that in mind, now we have a look at uh, if we now adjust equation six or we'll simplify it. And here we have we have the equation again. We're going to put the the uh, assumption that uh, enthalpy is proportional to temperature times some constant what h3 is a function of r so h3 is our control variable and r is our manipulated variable so uh, as with all other mathematical things we need to f do the first order derivative now we can change h3 to k T3 and H1 is K T1 etc etc and if we do the first of order derivative and I'm not going to go through the derivation you eventually get something that's like that I'm using the proportional sign because it is proportional I've removed sort of all the constants now we look very very carefully at the equation we have so we're manipulating ratio that now becomes the variable that we are manipulating so it's our MV and we're trying to control T3 and let's look at that denominator what is R normally? Now R is the ratio of the boiler feed water to the inlet steam and normally it's a very small number so R let's say R is around let's say it's 0 0.1, 0 0.1. 1%. Look at that denominator. It uh, is a constant basically. It's close to 1. So you could almost write um, dt3 is proportional to delta t over minus r dr. So in other words, we have a linear. This is linear because so that should be a 1. Let's quickly fix that. 
So that's basically a linear equation. This denominator hardly changes that significantly and it makes it insensitive. So it makes more sense to control it based on ratio. So how would one do that on a PNID? That's the next question. So I'm going to have to blur out a few of these um, numbers. But uh, here is the temperature controller. So let's assume that's your master TRC. Here's your steam. That's your MP steam. Well, in this case, it's the HP steam. And there's your boiler feed water. Now we're not, we're not really using these flow measurements. What we do is we take the output of this um, valve. It's drawn quite badly, unfortunately. Take the output of this valve. So the valve positioner signal. So as percent. Let's draw that in. So we go here. As percent. This pen thing doesn't work that nicely. And then this is your ratio, which is also, this is, we can say it's 0 to 2. For that, for all intents and purposes. So we know this one is 0 to 100. Wow, I love my handwriting on this. <laughs> uh, so 0 to 100 percent of the valve goes into here, and then we ratio 0 to 2 percent. And this goes, in essence, could go from 0 to 200. We would clamp that. And it sets the position of that valve. So now these are all linear trims. Or, so that if I plot valve lift versus flow, that's linear. And I plot this one as well. And that's linear. Then if you think about it, we've solved the ratio problem because as I open that valve, I linearly move up the flow curve. And as that valve opens, I don't have to wait for feedback in the temperature loop. Before I open up this valve, this valve automatically opens up in tandem, so in ratio. And then I tune this with one tuning setting, which makes it very important. And previously, we would have had startup conditions, which would have made it very diff many, very difficult. And now we don't have that issue. Now, normally, what a more elegant way to handle this is one wants to control the degree of superheat. So it's the degree of superheat. So what we often do is we take the pressure here and then we look on a saturation curve and we take we convert that to the saturation temperature and then we say we want to control it above a certain amount. So the set point for this, you don't want the operator to worry about what the saturation temperature is. So what we do is we calculate and then we have a delta. And that becomes the set point for this controller. So you give the operator, or you show the, the board operator, a degree of superheat. So you give them what we call a HIC, or a HIC, or we call it a TDRC. And the minimum that they have would be around about 8 degrees to 10 degrees Celsius. In other words, you want to control this temperature here at least 10 degrees Celsius above the saturation temperature at the given pressure on this line. And this entire thing is now linearized, you tune it for one scenario and uh, it solves the entire heat and material balance for all conditions.